Hello friends, in this video let's dive in and unravel some interesting details about passports. What is a passport? Passport is an official document which is proof of identity and proof of nationality of the person holding it. Passports are issued by the federal or national government of a country through their agency which deals with international affairs and immigration. We need a passport every time we cross the boundaries of a country of citizenship. But when we live and travel within the boundaries of our own country, we don't need a passport because most of us will possess some form of identity document like a national ID card or a driver's license and this ID document contains all of our basic information like our name, our date of birth, our photo and is very helpful in proving our identity while accessing services within our own country like opening a bank account or while driving a car or voting in an election and so on. But this ID is not considered an international travel document and therefore no country will allow us to enter their borders with our national ID card. Therefore, once we travel outside the borders of our home country, we need a passport. Well, the idea of passports is not very new. We can trace some of the other variation of passports for people traveling across countries through historical evidences in various civilizations. But if we look at today's modern world, it was after the First World War when the League of Nations was created to keep peace that a need was felt for some formal document to identify the country of origin of the immigrants. But at that time, there was no standardization of what and how a passport should be. It was in 1980 that passport standardization was introduced by ICAO, that is, International Civil Aviation Organization, which is an agency of the United Nations. This agency sets certain minimum requirements to ensure that all passports over the world are aligned to a basic standard. ICAO introduced machine-readable passports. Now what's special about these passports is that all the data on the ID page of the passport is also stored electronically on the passport. This helps the machines to read this information electronically using a special technology called Optical Character Recognition OCR. What OCR does is that it extracts texts from printed documents and converts them into machine-readable data. This made the data entry of passengers automated, error-free and led to a fast clearing at the immigration counters. More recent improvement has been with the introduction of biometric, also known as electronic, digital or e-passports. These passports look just like the machine-readable passports, but what is different and unique here is that these passports have a microprocessor chip and an antenna embedded in them. All the information on the ID page of the passport is stored on this chip. The biometric information stored on this chip is definitely all of your basic information plus your digital photo and fingerprints. In some cases, it also has iris recognition, thereby providing enhanced safety features. All these technological advancements make our passports safe and provides an extra layer of security by making it more difficult to forge or tamper with the passports and also helps in quick identity verification at border control points. Now the government issues different kinds of passports. Some of these kinds of passports are regular or ordinary passports that are issued to all the citizens. Emergency passports, these are issued to individuals who need to travel urgently and have lost or don't have a passport. Diplomatic passports, these passports are issued to the diplomats and senior government officials of the country. Official passports are passports which are, which are issued to government officers who need to travel for official duty. The holders of official and diplomatic passports are also entitled to a certain level of immunity. Every country has some form of regulation 
that lays down the guidelines as regards the issuance of passports. For example, Title 22 of the United States Code, Passports Act 1967 of India, and many more. These legislation specifies the eligibility criteria, the documents needed, and the process for obtaining a passport. It states the authority that will issue these passports. It states the circumstances under which a passport may be denied or revoked. For example, matters related to national security or certain criminal convictions. It deals with the validity and renewal of passports. Penalties for the offenses related to the misuse of passports, providing false information to the passport office or using passport for unlawful activities and also it lays down in significant detail and clarity the grounds for acquisition, surrender and revocation of passports. Now even though the basic framework of passport remains the same throughout the world, it can have different features like the color of the passport can be different for different countries. Some passports might have a 5 year validity while some have a 10 year validity and renewal requirements. So passports around the world are standardized based on some basic features. However, there are certain elements which are specific to the country which issues them. But friends, not all passports are issued by governments. There are some passports that are issued by international organizations to their employees. For example, the United Nations laissez-passer. This passport or travel document is issued by the United Nations for its representatives for official travel. Now, laissez passe basically means let it pass. So, the person who has the document, let them pass. On similar grounds, the European Union issues passports which are also known as laissez passe which are diplomatic and service passports issued to its officers but not the general public. Individual European Union countries issue passports to their respective nationals and citizens. But European Union passports are only issued to the diplomats of European Commission and the European Council and also other European delegates. Interpol travel document. Now Interpol that is international police also issues travel documents for their officers and staff who are on official duty and who have to travel for official purposes. And in certain exceptional circumstances, the International Committee of Red Cross can also issue a one-way emergency travel document to those people who either do not have a passport or any other travel document and as a result, neither can they return to their country of origin nor travel to any country offering temporary or permanent asylum to them. But friends, it's important to understand and remember that these documents are specific to the organization and their personnel. They are designed for official travel related to the work of these international entities. The holders of such passports typically enjoy certain privileges and immunities granted by the organizations issuing them. So friends, to conclude, Passport is a global travel document which not just validates our identity and our nationality but also enables us to travel and explore the world around us and opens doors to new adventures and global experiences. So friends, if you enjoyed this video on passports, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon with another video. Till then, goodbye, take care and have a wonderful day.